Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. I got a little bit of extra for you today on Off The Script. Before we get into the news, guys, I want to make an announcement. If you guys are going to be in the New York City area for SummerSlam weekend, I want to invite you all to come out to House of Glory High Intensity 7 on Friday, August 17th. And I will be there hosting the show with Solid Monster, man. If the Solid Monster sounds off, it is going to be an epic night. And you do not want to miss it, man. I am very happy and very proud to be sitting next to him and working alongside him for the first time. It is going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to get there on August 17th. Sammy Callahan will be there. Defending his newly won House of Glory Crown Jewel Championship. Austin Aries will be there. He will be defending for the first time ever in a House of Glory ring. The Impact World Heavyweight Championship. Plus a no ropes match. Which is the most dangerous match that House of Glory has between Anthony Gangone and the amazing Red for the House of Glory World Championship. Come on out. Friday, August 17th at the NYC Arena. House of Glory presents High Intensity Seven. Also, hopefully today, these bad boys go up. The new Summer Scam t-shirts going to be available in two colors. One in black and then one in blue with black trim. I just reached out to Barbershop Window. They say they are working on getting the shirts up on the site. I am hoping by the end of the business day today, you guys will be able to purchase your new Summer Scam t-shirts for SummerSlam 2000. And 18. Thank you guys so very much for all that. Please follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. And if you guys missed Monday Night Raw and SmackDown Live reviews, both of them are on the channel right now as we speak. Seth Rollins, we all know, will be defending the, or actually he will be vying for the Intercontinental Championship as Dolph Ziggler defends the Intercontinental Championship against Rollins at SummerSlam. And we all know that Ziggler will have Drew McIntyre in his corner, but who will be in Seth Rollins' corner? Well, there are conflicting reports right now that Seth Rollins will have someone in his corner, and then reports as of this morning reveal that the guy that everybody is expecting to be in Rollins' corner will not be at SummerSlam. As you saw on this week's episode of Monday Night Raw, Seth Rollins lost a handicap match to Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. The story that WWE is telling is that Rollins needs someone in his corner to battle the numbers game. However, Roman Reigns is not allowed on Monday Night Raw to get involved because Stephen McMahon wants him healthy for SummerSlam. Last week on an episode of the Wrestling Observer Live with Brian Alvarez, Alvarez reported the plans for Seth Rollins. He will be reunited with Dean Ambrose when he returns, and they will be a centerpiece, at least for a little bit, in revitalizing the Raw Tag Team division, which I think is the best thing right now. Plans change all the time, says Alvarez. The last I heard was probably it was going to be Jason Jordan and Chad Gable aligning forces, and Rollins and Ambrose will be a team as well, added to the Raw Tag Team division. It will not be Rollins and Jordan. But who knows what they'll do. The last line was a reference to how Vince McMahon changes his mind all the time. End quote. They need to revitalize the tag team division right now. Rollins is so good at everything he does. Uh, not only do you get him and Ambrose in the tag team division, and that at least makes it a little bit more interesting, but you always have the opportunity to bring Ambrose back, align him with Rollins, and then do what you originally had planned with turning Ambrose heel, which is something that I think he desperately needs out of anybody on Monday Night Raw because Ambrose was stale and boring as a babyface, no question. And I think a lot of people do agree with that. Ambrose has been out for nine months with a triceps injury and Jordan has been out with a neck injury since February. Ambrose will be back at SummerSlam, says Alvarez. And Jordan will be expected back soon, but he does not have an exact date for him. Rollins will likely, will likely be facing the numbers game again when he challenges Dolph Ziggler for the IC title because Drew McIntyre will almost certainly be at SummerSlam in Ziggler's corner. So the stage is set for Ambrose to sweep in and make, his, make his return and come out to save Rollins, get the big pop from the New York City crowd. 
So that's what most people expect to happen. But I did mention conflicting reports. According to Barnburner and Joe Pisic, I, I think that's his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name. Of Barnburner, I guess it's a show or a podcast. He says, and he doesn't list any sources. So this is why I don't really put much effort and stock into this. He says that Dean won't be making his return in Brooklyn on SummerSlam night. He revealed on the No Holds Barred podcast, per Ringside News, that WWE will bring back Ambrose to TV on the 27th of August, eight days after SummerSlam. He says, and I quote, Dean Ambrose is scheduled to be at SummerSlam. I don't know if they're going to use him at SummerSlam. But I do know this. August 27th is in Toronto, Monday Night Raw. I have heard by then, if they don't use him at SummerSlam or the next night on Raw at the Barclays Center, the following week, August 27th, they will bring back Dean Ambrose to WWE TV. End quote. On top of revealing when Raw... Uh, will have Ambrose return. Barnburner also speculated that he could be a face or a heel, like everybody is talking about right now with the impending return of Dean Ambrose. He goes on to say this, and I quote, Finally, I don't know if he'll be a face or a heel, but I've been told that they're not going to use him at SummerSlam the next night, but for sure the next Raw in Toronto on August 27th. I don't see how that makes any sense whatsoever. He didn't cite sources. I don't know where he's getting his information from. I don't understand why WWE would not use Ambrose at SummerSlam. So, if they don't use Ambrose at SummerSlam, how is Rollins going to overcome the numbers game? Or is it going to be a situation where McIntyre is there, he gets tossed out, and Rollins wins the match and the IC title on his own due to a technicality of the referee throwing Ambrose away from ringside and sending him to the back? I I don't know what WWE has planned. But I think the most exciting aspect of Rollins potentially winning the Intercontinental title is Dean Ambrose coming back. And I think that would make most sense on Sunday night. Now, I heard that he's not cleared for in-ring action, that he's at least another four to six weeks left to get cleared. But that doesn't mean he can't swing a chair. That doesn't mean he can't get involved and, you know, make his presence known. Or just back up Rollins when he needs it most. So I don't understand why WWE won't bring him back at SummerSlam when the crowd is going to be expecting it and they're going to be wanting it. If you don't give it to them, then they're probably going to feel neglected. They're they're probably going to be disappointed. And if you don't do it the next night at the Barclays Center when you know it's going to be one of the hottest Raws of the year expecting a return or a call-up from NXT and you don't get it, you know, the return of Ambrose in Toronto, yeah, it may be special and it may it, it may pop, but certainly not as big as in New York City, two nights in a row at the Barclays Center. I think WWE may miss the boat here if they don't bring back Ambrose and present him back to WWE television in New York City, SummerSlam weekend. You need to capitalize when it's hot, and this is around the time that everybody's been speculating that he's going to return. You do it, you bring him back, He plays a role on television until he's cleared. We get notification until he's cleared. And then you put him back in the tag team division with Seth Rollins. And then you got American Alpha. You got The Revival. You got AOP. And you got Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler as well. You know, it doesn't need to end at SummerSlam. The Rollins-Ziggler shit can be elevated to the next level. Instead of now being one-on-one, which we've seen... Uh, countless times already, and I think we are all in agreement that we're getting bored of it, it could pretty much go to the next level of adding Ambrose, and Ambrose is going to be the equalizer to Drew McIntyre. We get some Ambrose-McIntyre matches, we get some, you know, tag team matches between all four guys, possible tag team titles. I think the intensity and the hunger to be the best with Rollins and Ziggler being elevated to a tag team level now, fighting over the tag team championships, could be a very good thing, not only for all four guys, but it could be a very good thing for the division. And then with that, you could have Rollins be a dual champion, tag team, intercontinental, because she ain't doing anything with those fucking tag team titles. I'd rather than be on someone important like a Rollins while he holds the intercontinental championship. It would make the whole, the whole thing that much more special. And Ambrose could turn on Rollins when the time calls for it, you know? 
So I, I like that aspect of it a lot better. And I think Ambrose needs to come back at SummerSlam and just reintroduce himself by backing up Rollins against Ziggler and McIntyre. That is my thought on that. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. The Mae Young Classic is filming today. The Mae Young Classic is filming today at Full Sail University. I can't wait. It will be airing on the WWE Network on September 5th on that Wednesday, immediately following NXT. Last year, they did the binge block where they uploaded four weeks and we binged watched it. I didn't like that at all. I don't binge watch anything. The only thing that I binge watch is Seinfeld when it's on Thursday, TBS, when it's a two and a half hour block. That's the only thing I do because Seinfeld's the greatest comedy of all time, along with Married with Children, of course. But the Mae Young Classic is going to be back on September 5th and it's going to be airing weekly uh, once a week. I like that because it's easier to digest and the most important aspect of it all, and I don't want to sound greedy... But I don't like reviewing four shows in one episode. I want to review one show at a time a week for you guys. So now you're going to get more content when we do the May Young Classic coverage like we did last year. Because everybody enjoyed that as well. You're going to get NXT. And then the next morning, you're going to get the May Young Classic review. I like it. So you're going to get more content. You're going to get more uh, reviews. And it's going to be in a nice, swift, easy manner instead of binge-watching four episodes. i got to take four episodes of notes, whereas I could watch it after NXT. I could record NXT review, get that up for you guys on Wednesday, and then do the Mae Young Classic review that same night and upload that on Thursday. So that is what the schedule is looking like right now for what I have envisioned. The Mae Young Classic, featuring 32 women from around the world, will begin taping this week. WWE announced that the shows will start airing on Wednesday, September 5th, immediately following the weekly NXT TV show. The show air, uh, the show will air, rather, Wednesday night until only two wrestlers remain. As previously noted, the finals will take place at WWE Evolution on October 28th in Long Island, New York. Mauro Ranallo and Beth Phoenix, I thought... We're going to be the play-by-play -play and color commentators for the Mae Young Classic. That is no longer the case, which disappoints me greatly. I want nobody but Mauro Ronaldo doing these things because he's knowledgeable. He brings a level of excitement that Jim Ross certainly didn't even come close to bringing us last year with the Mae Young Classic. He didn't know shit. And when I look to an event like this, with individuals that I am not familiar with, I want Moro filling me in, and I want him to create a level of excitement for somebody that I haven't seen before, and it gets everybody excited. So that's what I want. But according to this, Moro Ronaldo and Beth Phoenix will be doing the Bracketology special in Orlando. WWE has confirmed this morning that Renee Young will be joining the commentary booth with Beth Phoenix and Mauro Ranallo for the Bracketology. What WWE is going to do as far as the play-by-play, -play, Michael Cole is going to be doing play-by-play -play with, I believe, Renee Young and Beth Phoenix, if I'm not mistaken. So Michael Cole will be doing the play-by-play -play for the Mae Young Classic, and it will not be Mauro Ranallo. Phoenix made her debut on commentary earlier this year as part of the Mixed Match Challenge that aired on Facebook Watch. WWE also announced that Kathy Kelly will be conducting backstage interviews and Kayla Braxton will serve as the ring announcer, which I don't like her at all. Uh, I would much prefer Mike Rome, but WWE getting a lot of female talent on this show. The Bracketology special will air on Wednesday, August 29th at 9 p.m. So there you guys have that. I will actually be in Chicago that week for the all-in special that's taking place from the Sears Center in Chicago. So I will probably be watching that from the hotel room, and I will be conducting most of my weekly business from the hotel room that week in Chicago. So again, listen, you know, uh, part of me is disappointed in the fact that Mauro Ronaldo is not going to be doing commentary. You guys know how I feel. I'm a big Mauro Mark. I think he's added uh, a, a special feel to NXT since he's been announced as the play-by-play -play man. I'm not going to sit here and say Michael Cole is going to do a bad job because if you guys remember with the first inaugural UK uh, tournament, Michael Cole did it with Nigel McGuinness and Michael Cole was actually very good. He sounded unlike what we hear on Monday Night Raw 
and he was more of a genuine voice than what we get on Monday Night Raw, meaning that Vince McMahon wasn't in his headset. Uh, he was just going off the cuff. He was being himself. He was much more genuine, and he wasn't handcuffed to saying stupid shit from Gorilla Position. So if this is the same thing as the UK tournament that he did with Nigel McGuinness, I think Michael Cole will be a great play-by-play announcer because he really did uh, offer that entire experience from the inaugural UK tournament, and he made it really special. And I thought he did a great job there. But Monday Night Raw, I wish I could say the same thing. He's just god-awful to listen to on Monday Night Raw, but you know, I understand that uh, it is not his fault. So Michael Cole will be doing the Mae Young Classic and not Mauro Ranallo. Matt Riddle might be injured already. It's not to a point where he's going to miss any WWE scheduled dates. In fact, he was at the Progress show that happened in New York City last night. But Matt Riddle was injured over this past weekend during a hardcore match with Shane Strickland in Philadelphia. Uh, Riddle's mom actually posted a photo of his hand that showed that he suffered a nasty cut on his finger. She noted that it was so deep that it took the tip of his finger off. Riddle has been pulled from all independent bookings, uh, which is clearly not the case because he was at Progress last night uh, because of the cut, but he did wrestle on a show the following day against Austin Theory in Massachusetts. He is expected to make his NXT debut at TakeOver Brooklyn 4, likely in the crowd, uh, like they've done with previous signees. Obviously, since he didn't break any bones, this is not a serious injury and will not delay his debut in NXT. Just wanted to throw that out there just so that you guys are aware of what's going on with Matt Riddle. And finally, guys, update on somebody that I can't wait to come back. Uh, Sami Zayn, injury update. Sami Zayn is undergoing surgery once again. This time, it's for his left shoulder. As previously reported, Zayn is sidelined with a rotator cuff injury on both shoulders. He had been working hurt since last August, but held off on getting surgery until his right rotator cuff injury. Zane believes he tore his right shoulder at a live event in Montreal a couple months ago. It is, in fact, the same shoulder that was injured during his debut match against John Cena when he thinks he injured it again last August in a match against Jinder Mahal. So uh, he only re-injured it uh, again this past August. The left shoulder uh, has been bothering him for a while now, and it had gotten progressively worse. Recovery for that type of injury takes four to six months, which means he will be out for the rest of the year. But he could be back in time for the Royal Rumble, and he should be ready to go for WrestleMania season. All things considered, it's good that he's getting these injuries taken care of now to alleviate the pain, uh, and he will be back during the most lucrative portion of WWE's calendar year. I can't wait for Sami Zayn to be back. He is someone that I certainly miss on television, and I think he was doing a brilliant job in his heel role. But normally when things like this happen and you're out for an extended period of time, and you come back, the crowd is going to welcome you with open arms. So we may see babyface Sami Zayn when he returns. The other thing that I hope we get differently when he returns is the fact that they actually push this guy because Sami Zayn plays a great underdog character. We all know that Sami Zayn's been underutilized, and I think Sami Zayn, if he gets back into shape and he sheds some of that, you know, uh, that little belly that he had, because he didn't really look all that good. He was great, but he really didn't look the part. And I think that was because of the injury. Now, if he gets the injury taken care of, he goes through rehabilitation, he gets back into shape, I think we, need, we, I think we would see a new, refreshed, rejuvenated Sami Zayn. And I think WWE should be able to do a little bit more with him. And I hope that's the case. The guy's too good not to be used. And he's too good to be sitting on the sidelines at fucking Titus Catering uh, for the duration of his Monday Night Raw stay. So that is that, guys. That is the little bit of extra I got for you. These are the stories that we're not going to be covering on Off The Script come this weekend, so I wanted to get these out there for you on your Wednesday. I will not be doing NXT tonight. I've been doing it on Thursday. I feel like the viewership is a little bit better on Thursday morning, so we'll be doing that uh, tomorrow. I will be watching it tonight. I'll be taking my notes tonight, and I'll be doing the review tomorrow as well. We, we will have a Call of Duty Black Ops 4 gameplay again tomorrow night, and then we will hit the weekend, as always, with Off The Script. Thank you guys so very much. Again, please follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on that bell for notification. If you guys want to support the podcast, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. These bad boys should be up by the end of business day today, I'm hoping. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. And please make sure you guys check out High Intensity 7 tickets, HOGWrestling.net. 
My special guest will be Jason Solomon, Solomonster of the Solomonster Sounds Off for High Intensity 7 Friday, August 17th, where I will also be doing play-by-play commentary. Thank you guys so very much. This has been Off The Script Extra for your Wednesday, August 8th. I'll see you guys tomorrow for NXT and then tomorrow night for Call of Duty, Black Ops 4 Beta Gameplay, and then I'll see you guys Friday for Off The Script Episode 234. I'll talk to you guys later.